Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Women in Data Science 2023. As every year we are here live at Stanford University profiling some amazing women and men in the fields of data science. I have my co-host for this segment, it's Hannah Freitag. Hannah is from Stanford's Data Journalism Program. Really interesting, check it out. We're very pleased to welcome our first guest of the day, fresh from the keynote stage, Gayatri Ganu, the VP of Data Science at Meta. Gayatri, mm -hmm. it's great to have you on the program. Mm -hmm. Likewise, thank you for having me. So you have a PhD in computer science, you, you shared some really cool stuff. Everyone knows Facebook, everyone uses it. Um, I think my mom might be one of the biggest <laughs> users and she's probably <laughs> watching right now. <laughs> Who don't, people don't realize there's so much data behind that and data that drives decisions that we engage with. But talk to me a little bit about you first. Okay. PhD in computer science. Yep. Were you always, were you like a STEM kid? Little guy, actually, little STEM? Yeah, I was a STEM kid. I grew up in Mumbai, India. Uh, my parents are actually pharmacists, so they were not like math or stats or anything anything like that, but I was always a STEM kid. I don't know, I think it, I think when I was in sixth grade when we got our first personal computer and I obviously used it as a Pac-Man playing I, machine. I was like games. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so good at, and I, I honestly believe, I think being good at games kind of got me more familiar and comfortable with computers. Yeah, I, I think I always liked computers, I, yeah. And so now, you lead, I'm looking at my notes here, the engagement ecosystem and monetization data science teams at Facebook. And I talk about those, what are the missions of those teams and how does it impact the everyday user? Yeah, so the engagement is basically users coming back to our platform more. There's you know, no better way for users to tell us that they are finding value uh, on the things that we're doing on Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, all the other products, then coming back to our platform more. So the engagement ecosystem team is looking at trends, looking at where there are needs, looking at how users are changing their behaviors, um, and you know, helping build strategy for the long term using that data knowledge. Uh, monetization is very different. Uh, you know, obviously, the, the top, top apex goal is have a sustainable business mm -hmm. so that we can continue building products for our users. And so, but you know, I, I said this in my keynote today, it's not about making money. Our mission statement is not, you know, maximize as much money as you can make. Uh, it's about be building a meaningful connection between businesses, customers, uh, users, and you know, especially in these last two or three funky post-pandemic years, it's been such a big and important thing to do for small businesses all, over, all, all around the world for users to find like goods and services and products that they care about and that they can connect to. So, you know, there is truly a uh, connection between my engagement world and the monetization world. And, you know, it's not very clear always till you go into, like you peel the layers. Everything we do in the ads world is also always first with users um, as our, you know, guiding principle. Yeah, um, you mentioned how you supported especially small businesses also during the pandemic. You touched a bit upon it in the keynote speech. Um, can you n tell our audience what were like special or certain specific programs you implemented to support especially small businesses during these yeah, times? Yeah, um, so there are 200 million businesses on our platform, uh, a lot of them small businesses. Um, 10 million of them run ads. So there is a large number of like businesses on our platform who, you know, use the power of social media to connect to the customers that matter to them, to like, you, you know, use the free products that we build. Um, in the post pandemic years, we built a lot of stuff very quickly when COVID first hit mm -hmm. uh, for business to get the word out, right? Like they had to announce when uh, special shopping hours existed for at-risk populations or when certain goods and services were available versus not. Uh, we, sh we, we had grants, uh, there's a $100 million grant that we gave out to small businesses. Um, users could show sort of, wo you know, show their support uh, with a bunch of campaigns that we ran. And of course, we continue running ads. Our ads are um, very effective, I guess, and, you know, getting a very reliable connection with, uh, um, from the customer to the business. And so, you know, we've, we've run all these studies, uh, we support, I, I talked about two examples today. Um, one of them is uh, the largest black owned, woman black owned wine company and how they needed to move to an online program and you know, we gave them a grant um, and supported them through their ads campaign and you know, they saw 60% lift in purchases or something like that. So a um, lot of good stories, small stories, you know, on a scale of 200 million, uh, that really sort of make me feel proud about the work we do. Um, and you know, now more than ever before, I think people can connect so directly with businesses. 
you can WhatsApp them. I come from India, every business is on WhatsApp. Uh, and you can you know WhatsApp them, you can send them Facebook messages, and you can build this like direct connection uh, with things that matter to you. We have this expectation that we can be connected anywhere. I was just mm -hmm. at Mobile World Congress or MWC last week where I'm obviously talking about connectivity. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to do any transaction, whether it's post on Facebook or call an Uber or watch on Netflix if you're on the road. We expect that we're, we're going to be connected. Yeah. And what we, I think a lot of us don't realize, I mean, those of us in tech do, but how much data science is a facilitator of all of those interactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we, as we, Guy Therese, we talk about like any business, whether it is, um, the, the black women owned wine business, yeah. great business, <laughs> or a, a grocer, yeah. or a car dealer. Everybody <laughs> has to become data driven yes. because the consumer has the expectation. Yes. Talk about data science as a facilitator of just pretty much everything we're doing and conducting in our daily lives. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think data science as a field wasn't really defined like maybe 15 years ago, right? So this is all in our lifetimes that we are seeing this. Even in data science today, people come from so many different backgrounds and bring their own expertise here. And I think we, you know, this conference, all of us get to define what that means and how we can bring data to do good uh, uh, in the world. Everything you do, as you said, um, there is a lot of data. Uh, Facebook has a lot of data, Meta has a lot of data. And how do we responsibly use this data? How do we use this data to make sure that we're, you know, representing all diversity, you know, minorities, like machine learning algorithms don't do well with small data, they do mm -hmm. well with big data, right. but the small data matters, and how yeah. do you like, you know, bring that into algorithms? Um, e yeah, so everything we do at Meta is very, very data driven. I feel proud about that, to be honest, because while data gets a bad rap at some, uh, sometimes, having no data and making decisions in the blind is just the absolute worst mm -hmm. thing you can do. And so, you know, we, the job as a data scientist at Facebook is to make sure that we use this data, use this responsibly, make sure that we are representing every mm -hmm. aspect of the you know three billion users who come to our platform. Um, yeah, have data data serves uh, all the products that we build here. The responsibility factor is is huge. You know, we can't talk about mm -hmm. AI without talking about ethics. One of the things that I was talking with Hannah and our other co-host Tracy about during our opening is something I just learned over the weekend, and that is that the CTO of ChatGPT is a woman. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and I thought, why isn't she getting more aware? It's just a lot of a lot of conversations with their CEO. Yeah. Everyone's using it, playing around with it. I actually asked it yesterday, what's hot in data science? <laughs> <laughs> That's I was like, should I have asked that to Paris Hilton? What's hot? Um, but it, I, I thought that was phenomenal, and we need to be talking mm. about this more. Yeah. Like, this is. Yeah something that they're they're likening to the launch of the iPhone, which has transformed our lives. I know, it with is. Chat GPT, and its chief technologist is a female. How yeah. great is that? And I don't know whether you, I don't know the stats around this, but I think CTO is even less, uh, it's even more rare to have a woman there. Like mm -hmm. you have women CEOs because, I mean, we are going, we are you know, building upon years and years of women not choosing mm -hmm. technical fields and not choosing STEM, and it's going to take some time, but yeah, yeah, she is a woman. Isn't it amazing? It's, it's yes, wonderful. Yes, there was a great, there's a great Fast Company article on her that mm -hmm. I was looking at yesterday, and I just thought, we need to do what we can to help spread, Mira Marathi is her name, uh, because what she's doing is one of the biggest technical, mm -hmm. technological breakthroughs we may ever see in our lifetime. It, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about <laughs> it. Um, I also wanted to share some stats. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, um, I was um, going to um, follow up on the thing that you mentioned that we had l many years with like not enough women choosing a career path in STEM and that we have to overcome this trend. Um, what are some, like, what is some advice you have like as the vice president data science like yeah. what can we do to uh, to make this field more you know approachable yeah, and absolutely. accessible I mean, for women yeah i there's so much that we have done already and you know want to continue to keep doing of course conferences like this these where you know and i think there are high school students here there are students from my alma mater's undergrad year uh, it's amazing to like get all these women together to get them to see what success could look like, yeah. what like being a woman leader in the space could look like. So that's, you know, that's one. At Meta, um, I lead recruiting at Meta, and we've done a bunch to sort of open up the um, thinking around data science and technical jobs for women. Simple things like what you write in your job description. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you know these, this, this, or this is a story you've heard before. When you, see, when you have a job description and there are like 10 things that you need to, uh, you know, be good at to apply to this job, 
a woman sees this 10 and says, okay, I don't meet the qualifications of mm. one of them and she doesn't apply. Mm. And a man sees one that he meets the qualifications to and he applies. And so, you know, there's small things you can do and just how you write your job description, what goals you set for diversity and inclusion for your own organization. We have goals. Facebook's always been pretty up there and like, you know, speaking out for diversity. You know, Sheryl Sandberg uh, has been our um, uh, chief business officer for a very long time. and. She's been like amazing at us, like pushing for more women. So yeah, every step of the way. I think we made a lot of progress, to be honest. I do think women uh, choose STEM fields a lot more than they did. Uh, when I did my computer science, I was often one of the like, one or two women in the, uh, in the computer science class. It takes some time to, for it to percolate all the way to like having more CTOs and CEOs, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's gonna happen in our lifetime and you know, Three of us know this. Women are going to rule the world. And it is <laughs> drop the mic, girl. <laughs> and it is going to happen in our lifetime. So and yeah, we, I'm and we about have it. responsibility in helping make that happen. You know, I, I'm curious. You were in STEM. You talked about computer science being one of the only females. How, what? One of the things that the NEB.org data from 2022 showed some some good numbers. The, the number of women in technical roles is now. 27.6%, I believe, so up from 25, it's up yeah. in 22, which is yeah. good. Um, more hiring of women. Yeah. One of the biggest challenges is attrition. What yeah. keeps you motivated yeah. to stay wh where you are, doing what you're doing, managing a family, and helping to drive these experiences at Facebook that we all expect are just going to happen? Yeah. Um, two things come to mind. It does take a village. You do need people around you. You know, I'm grateful for my husband. You talked about managing a family. I did the very Indian thing and my parents live with us and they help take mm, care good. of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my kids are young, six and four, and I definitely needed help over the last few yeah. years. Um, it takes mentors, it takes other people that you look up to who've gone through all, all of those same challenges and can you know, advise you to sort of continue working in the field. I remember when my kid was born, when he was six months old, I was considering quitting and my husband's like, to be a good role model for your children, you need to continue working. Like, just being a mother is not enough. Um, and so, um, you know, so that's one, you know, the village that you build around you, your supporters, your mentors who keep encouraging you. Cheryl Sandberg said this to me in my f second month at Facebook. Um, she said that women drop out of technical fields. They become managers, they become sort of administrative more in their nature of their work. And her advice was, don't do that. Don't stop the technical. And I think that's the other thing I'd say to a lot of women, mm, technical stuff is hard, uh, yeah. but you know, keeping up with that and keeping sort of on top of it actually does help you in the long run and like, has definitely helped me in my career at Facebook. I think one of the things, and Hannah and I and Tracy talked about this in the open, and I think you'll agree with us, is the whole saying of you can't be what you can't see. And I like mm -hmm. to see, well, you can be what you can see. That visibility, the, the, the great thing that, that Wids did in having you on the stage as a speaker this morning, mm -hmm. so people could understand, everyone, like I said, everyone knows Meta. Everyone yeah, uses mm -hmm. Facebook. Meta. Um, and so it's, it's important to bring that connection yeah. of how data is driving the experiences, mm -hmm. the fact that it's user first, but we need to be able to see women in positions yes. like you, especially yes. with Cheryl stepping down, moving on to yes. something else. Or people that are like YouTube influencers that have mm -hmm. no idea that the head of, of YouTube for a very long time, Susan Wojcicki, <laughs> is a woman yes. who pioneered <laughs> streaming. And, and I mean, how often do you, are you on YouTube every day? Yep, mm -hmm. every but day. But we have to be able to see and, and raise the yeah. profile of these women and learn from them and be inspired Absolutely. to keep going and going, mm -hmm. I like what I do, I, I'm making a difference yeah. here. Yeah. And I, I can be the, the sponsor, the mentor for somebody down the road. Absolutely. Yeah, and and yes. then referring back to what we talked in the beginning, show that data science is so diverse. And yeah. it doesn't mean if you're like in IT, you're like sitting in your dark room, right. coding all day. <laughs> but you know, to show the different right. facets of yeah. this job and right. make this appealing to, yeah. to women for sure. And I said this in my keynote too, you know, one of the things that helped me most is complementing the data and the techniques and the algorithms with how you work with people and you know empathy and alignment building and uh, leadership strategic mm -hmm. thinking and i think honestly i think women do a lot of this stuff really well uh, yeah. we know how to work with people mm -hmm. and so you know i've seen this at meta for sure like uh, you know all of these skills soft skills as we call them go a long way in like you know doing the right things and having a lasting impact and 
like I said, women are going to rule the world once, you know, in, in our lifetimes. So. Oh, I can't, I can't <laughs> wait to see that happen. There's some interesting female candidates that are already throwing their hats in the ring for the next presidential yes. election. So we'll have to see <laughs> where that goes. But some of the things that are so interesting to me, here we are in California in Palo Alto, technically Stanford is its own uh, zip code, I believe. Um, and we're, we're we're in California, we're freaking out because we've gotten so much rain. It's yeah. absolutely unprecedented. We yeah. need it. We had a massive yeah. drought, from extreme drought, legally, te technically, for many years. I've got friends that live up in Tahoe. I've been getting pictures this morning <laughs> of windows Facebook, that are I covered. Hope. Yes, <laughs> actually, yes. Um, <laughs> that were windows, like second story windows are covered in snow. Yeah. Climate change. Climate change. There's yeah. so much that data science is doing to power and power our understanding yes. of climate change, whether it's that yeah. or police violence. Yeah, or, we had a talk yeah, today on that, yeah, which is amazing. Yes. So I, I want more people to know what data science is really facilitating yeah. as in, that impacts all of us, whether you're in a technical role or not. not. And data wins arguments. I yes, mean, that's, I love I, that. I said this in my slides today. Like, you know, there's always going to be doubters and naysayers, and I mean, but there's hard evidence. There's hard data. Like. Yeah, in yeah. all of these fields, I mean, the, the data that climate change, uh, the data that, uh, the data science that we have done in the environmental and co climate change uh, areas and medical and, yeah. you know, medicine professions, there's so much, so much more opportunity and like how much we can learn more about the world. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's a pretty exciting like time to be a data scratching scientist. This, I, we're just <laughs> scratching the surface yeah. with the potential and the, and the global impact yeah. that we can make with data yeah. science. Guys, it's been so great having you on theCUBE. Thank Guys, you thank you so much. So much. I love, me. I'm going to take data wins arguments into my personal life. <laughs> I was actually, just, just a quick anecdote, funny story, I was listening to the radio this morning and there was a commercial from an insurance company. Mm -hmm. And I guess the joke is it's, it's, a, it's an argument between two spouses. <laughs> and the, the voiceover comes in and says, let's watch replay. Mm. And like, if only they, then they got the data mm. that helped the woman mm. win the <laughs> argument. <laughs> I will warn so. you, it doesn't always help with arguments I have with yeah, my husband. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep it in, in the middle of my yes. mind. Gaitri, thank you so much thank you for so sharing. Much. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. And yeah. being a great female that we can look up to. We oh. really appreciate your insights Likewise. and your time. Thank you. All right, for our Thank guests you. and for Hannah Freitag, mm -hmm. I'm Lisa Martin, live at Stanford University covering Women in Data Science 23. Mm -hmm. Stick around, our next guest joins us in just a minute. I have been in the software and technology industry for over 12 years now, so I've had the opportunity as a marketer to really understand and interact with customers across the entire buyer's journey. Hi, I'm Lisa Martin and I'm a host of The Cube. Being a host on The Cube has been a dream of mine for the last few years. I had the opportunity to meet Jeff and Dave and John at EMC World a few years ago and got the courage up to say, hey, I'm really interested in this. I love talking with customers. Give me a shot, let me come into the studio and do an interview and see if we can work together. I think where I really impact the Cube is being a female in technology. We interview a lot of females in tech. We do a lot of women in technology events. And one of the things I 